When we're sea trout fishing, we often find the need to have a hook trailing behind the main body of the fly or behind the, the main hook of the fly, be that uh, for your surface lures, for your tandem lures, uh, or even just for your secret weapons or, or stinger mounts. Now, uh, these can be pretty time consuming uh, to, to tie uh, in the first place, just to even just to create the mounts, uh, which when you then end up putting them up up the nearest tree, obviously doesn't, uh, the two don't really balance out and uh, it, it'd be nice to be able to create those mounts a hell of a lot quicker, so at least then if you do end up uh, putting them up the tree, which is inevitable with the night fishing, then at least you haven't spent half an hour or so actually creating the mount in the first place. Now, I'm going to show you a very, very simple way of creating uh, these mounts with the use of shrink tubing. Now for you that are not uh, too familiar with shrink tubing, it's literally uh, a plastic or kind of a, yeah, feels like a, a, a plastic malleable material, um, but when you pass a heat source underneath it, you need a lighter, or even you can, I believe you can use a steam of a kettle, but I usually opt for a lighter. If you pass the, pass the heat source underneath it, the, the tubing shrinks to a thinner diameter. Uh, it's usually used, I, I believe it's used in the electric, uh, electrical world, um, but I believe that the carp anglers have been using it a lot for, for creating their rigs as well. Now it comes in a huge variety of diameters and colours and yeah it's just uh, a fantastic material if you can call it that uh, to, to, to be utilized for uh, from the sea trout uh, well actually from the uh, from the fishing scene in, in general the multitude of uh, uses for it but I'm going to show you a pretty simple way of again creating uh, creating mounts for your for your sea trout flies again for your uh, seeker weapons tandems or even your surface lures now you can use some amnesia uh, which I'm a very big fan of uh, usually you can't get away with using braid for the simple reason that the braid remains too uh, flexible after you've created the mount. Um, basically it, it, it can curl back and uh, attach yourself to the head of the fly or catch back on the, uh, onto, the main, onto your main leader basically. Uh, so because of that uh, you've always had to use pretty stiff nylon some people have used pike wire I'm not a fan of pike wire because if you if you bend the pike wire you can't really bend it back usually you can with with nylon by uh, warming it up a little in hot water or whatever uh, but again braid hasn't really been you haven't able to uh, haven't been able to use braid because it's been too soft um, but with the combination of braid and then the shrink tubing, you really da do have a winning formula because braid is a lot, lot thinner uh, than the nylon, uh, certainly for for the, for the same breaking strain. So actually, for for the use of the uh, the mounts, it's absolutely absolutely fantastic because it helps keep uh, the eye streamlined as you finish the fly because you need to double it through the uh, the front hook as well. Uh, but also, again, it creates a very streamlined effect. But yeah, f f fantastic. Uh, but with that fantastic strength, also. Um, the great thing is when you super glue uh, your thread. If you're using nylon, obviously uh, the super glue doesn't penetrate into the nylon where it does actually penetrate into your braid. So it's, it's actually a great material from that perspective as well. And actually I'm just reading on this, this is 80 pound braid and it's got the diameter of 17 pound uh, monofilament. So you can see that the ob obvious benefit there, especially when you talk about doubling it, so you're essentially creating, creating a 160 pound link. Um, if you catch a sea trout bigger than that, then you're doing very well. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a sea trout in existence of that size. I wish there were, but uh, I doubt there are. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to just show you, first of all, a very simple way of just creating a bog standard uh, link. So I'm going to use some owner hooks. Uh, to be honest, you can use all, all sorts of hooks. Uh, usually the carp hooks are better because they come in very short shanks. They're usually very wide gape and they've usually got a pretty decent uh, sized eye. Now you do want a, a fairly decent um, sized eye because of the material you're going to be passing through it. And this one, uh, that's a size 4. It's not, you know, 
in, in Camasan terms or you know even Partridge terms I'd say that's a pretty small size 4 um, that's more in my world probably more of a size 6 or even 8 uh, but anyway uh, the best thing to do is obviously go along to your tackle shop and uh, and view uh, the hooks hooks on hooks in question but as you can see pretty short shank pretty short in the shank nice wide round gape and then the the, the big round eye um, if you get all three of those then you've got a winning hook basically and that's yeah that's one of the best I've found out there uh, along with the likes of again they're, they're all carp hooks you've got the um, the end Nash end game um, fang uni there you go <coughs> that's a new one on me uh, anyway so so we've got a section of the braid so you'll need to cut about six inches or 15 centimeters so all you need to do, pass the braid through the eye of the hook, like so, so it just dangles up, and then marry the two ends of the braid up, again pretty simple. I've actually chosen this braid as well, I should probably comment on that. A lot of braids are actually quite limp, this is actually quite a stiff braid which does lend itself to, to, to creating these mounts as well. It's the spider wire. Spider wire tends to be a stiffer braid. Um, it, it, it helps you when you're passing tubing and stuff over uh, the, the, the tag ends. It, it helps to have that bit of stiffness left in the braid, which this one does. Again, a lot of the other braids would actually now be you know, kind of drooping over there, but the, the, these remain pretty, pretty stiff. So the next thing to do, uh, you then need to actually have skipped a, a small section there so let me just run that one quickly go back to your hook and with the different diameters in your um, in your shrink tubing choose a diameter that just pushes over the eye of the hook now you want it to just be able to to crawl over now that's perfect um, if it's yeah if it's too loose that one's that was not too bad but obviously yeah something like that would be uh, just an overkill so you want again just create that nice streamlined uh, tubing see that's that to me is too loose but that one yeah with a bit of an effort it goes over and that's perfect okay so I'm going to choose this section again you can cr you, you can choose clear you can choose black you can choose red you can choose blue you know it, it can vary according to the patterns you're using basically now you cut a section according to the length of the fly you want to end up with so it depends how far back you want that hook trailing and that will vary according to what you're trying to create if you're trying to create a secret weapon if you're trying to create a, a surface lure mount like a jambo mount or whatever um, so but just for just for argument's sake I'm going to create a, a secret weapon mount I'm going to cut that uh, at around three centimeters which is about there so I'm just going to take these up, again marry the two ends up, like so, and then just slip the tubing up, up and over, simple as that. Slide it down and then just gradually inch it over the eye of the hook. You can use the tag ends, just pull them straight. Again I prefer it to be snug, well, that's perfect. So make sure it just goes over the eye of the hook then it's going to keep everything in line for you there you go simple as that so that's the tubing on the tag ends running through the eye of the hook next step try and hold the hook in this hand and sorry this uh, between those two fingers and then the other tag end over to so try and do everything one hand so then you've got a free hand to work the lighter and then that's all you do is you pass the lighter underneath try and do this so you can show you at the same time don't hold it in one spot for too long because if you do you'll end up burning the, the, the braid in the center and after you've done it all after it's fully shrunk all the way down the length again just pass it over the pass the flame over the entire length and don't hold it in one spot for too long after you've done so really pull with this hand or really pull with this hand and hold hold the whole mount in a very straight line until the tubing cores which doesn't actually take that long give it you know 10 15 seconds and there you go what you end up with is a perfectly straight 
mount. Okay, but the beauty of this is the shrink tubing, even when it has shrunk, remains pretty flexible. Not too flexible that it's automatically going to come back and catch on your line or on your front hook, but then it's not going to be too rigid that it's going to lever out of a fish like a Waddington can do or, or, or whatever. So there you go. That's essentially created uh, your seeker weapon mount, which can take an eternity because of yeah, passing uh, the nylon through here, and then you have to whip this section. You almost have to tie an entire fly there, and then you start you know, um, twisting the nylon before uh, attaching it to the front hook. So there's one way of doing it, okay? So that's that's just a, a, a generic mount. Uh, yeah, you can use a treble back here, you can use a double back here. It doesn't really matter. Here I've used a single just to show you how it works with a single, but again, it works with doubles, trebles, whatever you want to use, essentially.